with your little stir stick. They each get their own. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to put on gloves because it gets messy once you start working over there. All right, so we picked our colors. Mm -hmm. And you said you had a accent color? A contrast color. Contrast color. So it's one of the ones that you picked? Uh, yeah. So you picked four colors that look really pretty together, and then white will be our contrast color. So we're actually using white as a fifth color. Yes. But you can use any number of colors. Yes. But a contrast color is required. In my view of the world, yes. Okay. My spout thing doesn't work. And that's it. And that's it. And so, so paint the stick. Not very much paint. But, but you have to whittle it down a little bit with, with flow troll. Flow so troll. one part paint, usually one and a half to two parts flow troll will get the right consistency that I like. Okay. So more flow troll than paint. And that makes it into a pourable paint. Yes, because oh. this is too thick as it is. Got it. It's a good thing that these paints don't require much because then they last forever. True. Well, you got to remember, you're doubling or almost tripling your volume by adding the flow troll. Yes. Okay. So these are our colors. They've got a good thing going on here. Sometimes the flow troll um, creates a film on the inside if it's sitting for too long. So I just go like this just to make sure that okay. it's not going to... And you've done this a few times, so you know the consistency that you're looking for. Yes. So, like, if I were going to pour this onto something, that's a very slow pour. You want it to be like pancake batter. Got it. Where'd you get the flow troll from? Amazon. But you can, I think you can get it from Home Depot. Okay. So it's a little milky consistency. Mm -hmm. But it does not dilute the color like one might think. Oh, okay. So even though it looks white, it doesn't turn your color white. Correct. It keeps the same color, it just thins it out. Correct. Okay. Yeah, that's much looser. Oh, yeah. That's what you want. Okay. Interesting. So now, are you going to do multiple pieces? Yes. How do so, you do multiple pieces when you only have a set number of cups? Do you pour, because don't you turn that upside down? Um, I would normally turn it upside down if I were only doing like a Lazy Susan or something, uh -huh. but because we're doing stuff like that, I would actually... Um, Put it into a single cup, layered? You. Yeah, well, single cup layered for one, but you could potentially do little flip cups on all of those, or the way that I'm going to do it is just by pouring okay. across all of them. But you're going to mix the colors first. Like, layer them in a single cup first. Yes. You're not going to pour from five separate cups. No. Okay. No. Got it, got it. But we're not there yet. Next up is to add our treadmill oil, aka silicone, because that's what makes all of the beautiful little 
cells. That's what the dots are called. They're called cells. So the little bubbles. The... Yes. And I keep it in here just in case it falls over. And you put very, let me see that. You put very little of that in, right? Only a couple drops per color and you don't like super, super mix it like I just was. You barely kind of mix it and in. what is it? Treadmill oil? There's a million different names for it, but essentially what you're looking for is silicone. But this is actual treadmill oil. Yeah, if I had a treadmill. If you had a treadmill, it would be lubricant for the belt. Yep. Couple drops. Okay, so it's the mixing drops, of the paint. Couple drops, couple drops. And that, that gives it its funkiness. Mm -hmm. So now mix quickly. I mean, not like time-wise, but just like right. not an overly mix. Like I'm only mixing one or two swirls. Right. Now is the fun part. Yippee. How do you want to layer it, fine sir? And actually, I'm gonna get some of these ready. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter which time you use the white one. It can. Oh, so everything is done in here. Yes. This is your Because studio. I wouldn't dare do anything over here. Okay. No, I don't have any specific um, orders of to put that in. I am curious because they are five very different colors. Mm -hmm. And that'll be fun to see how they come out. So you do want this to be as level as possible. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's just going to tilt on its own and that'll alter the appearance of it. Correct. But. I've used it a hundred times and there's a bunch of dried paint on it, so it might not be a hundred percent level. Okay. All right. So we take our cup. Cup. Usually what I like to do is either make the contrast color the very first color or the very last color. Okay. Including in between. Okay. Because for me that just, it works better. Got it. So. so let's go first. What's your order? First. Uh, contrast color. So white. Okay. Not all of it. Because we're going to do multiple layers. Right. Um, do it in the order that you have it. So do that. And, yep. Okay. And then do the bluish one. And do the pinkish one. And then the green one last. And so that's a lot of paint for a single board. Or you're going to get more than one board out of it. We're doing five. Right. Okay. So really, all you have is a mishmash of paint. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you just do it again. Oh, and you put another layer on. Yep, until you're out of paint. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, because what? Fear, realistically, what else are you going to do with it all? Right. And you're not stirring it at all because you don't want it to. No. You do Otherwise, you're just going to get an ugly brown, and you're not going to get the differences in colors that you... Correct. come to expect Correct. from poured acrylic. Yes, sir. You are right. Okay. And yet you so confidently do this just wearing gloves and regular pajamas and you keep it off your pajamas. Yes. By the way, kick-ass pajamas. I'm loving the sloths. Chelsea got them for me. They're cool. All right, we're almost ready. Okay, I'm totally ready. I'm super excited. All right. Okay. So we're bringing the paint over. And which one are you gonna do first? So Ooh. what I like to do is I like to kind of just okay all over the place. Excellent. I gotcha. So we might actually not have enough for five. Okay, you do what you do. So you got enough for three, give or take. Yeah. So now how do you tilt it to ensure that you get the coverage? You pick it up. Oh, you do physically pick it up? Yeah. Okay, that's hence the reason for the gloves. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So the 
this one. Gonna move it around a little bit. Make sure I get all my edges. Pick my cup back up since it fell over. This one, I actually kind of like how that looks. Yep, that one looks good. That one, you gotta get the edges done. Yep, so, gotta get all my edges. Very cool. And then you just kind of play with the design if you like it. Yep. And so basically, you let these sit right in the place that they're in? Yep. And how long does it take to dry? Uh, about two days. Okay. And then you pour the resin over it. And that takes another two days to dry. Okay. There you go. Yeah, so the actual process does not take a super long time. No, it does not. This is mostly drying time. So it looks like Look fun. how cool! And you can kind of see, there's some really funky design work. And all she did was layer different colors. It's simple acrylic craft paint, but mixed with the proper ingredients and put in the proper order really brings it out into a very unique pattern uh, that is different every single time. She poured these from the same cup. There's three images and all three of them look completely different, very unique. So this is a process known as poured acrylic. Nice job.